from this computer. So welcome to our um, first push night, party up study hall night of September. We're gonna do another one. We'll probably do one a week for the next four or five weeks because um, I am finding for myself and a lot of other people that to have a block of time set aside with girlfriends as if we're all around the big study hall table in the library at the high school that we can we can get a whole lot done in um in a small period of time so um and feel successful and then we don't have to do it after we're done then we're we're done for a few days so um and i also think that it it shows us what we're capable of so i hope you'll be able to stay on the whole time for those of you who can't I totally understand what we're going to do is kick it off for, uh, and I'm recording this, this training portion, I'm gonna kick it off with a quick training, uh, talking about four key components to bookings. And there are more, but these are the four that keep resonating for me. The first one is who am I reaching out to? The second one is what am I saying? The third is how am I following up? And the fourth is what am I doing with the responses that I get? Okay, so those are the four key components that we're gonna talk about. The first one is the context. Now, there are probably two different kinds of people that you're reaching out to tonight or on any given day. One group are the people who said that they were interested in a party, but you don't have a date or you don't quite know when the party is going to be. The other kind is the cold call, the reaching out to people who you just really like and like to, would like to do a party with. So there's, those are two different kinds of people. So how do you decide who to reach out to? Well, it's good if you've already done some parties we always want to go back to the people who were at the parties and bought jewelry from us so these this is part of the the, the, the cold calling so to speak um, except it isn't really because they did buy jewelry from us so they are sort of our warm leads in a way they bought jewelry we want to say thank you it's okay to say thank you twice um, because you can say thank you this time with new information um, it can be Hope you're loving your jewelry now that you've worn it for a while. Have you been getting compliments? Um, and do you um, want, wanted to see if you're up for something fun this fall, getting some girlfriends together and adding to your collection for free this time. Um, the other kind is the one who, so then the uh, another kind is the one who said that she wanted a party. Hey, circling back around to you um, to see when you're thinking about doing your party. Um, so we can get something on the calendar. And then mm -hmm. the other kind, like I said, is, is the true cold call where um, maybe what you're doing in that case is going back to that 100 contacts and counting list and picking a couple different circles of friends and thinking, okay, out of my work group, people that I work with every day, who's the most likely person to book a party with me? And reaching out to that person or maybe two people. So going from around different circles of friends and doing a cold call, um, text message, email, or Facebook message to those people. So you're going to have two, basically two different kinds. One who's bought from you before um, and, and wants a party and the other is a cold call. But within the, the bought from you before, there's, there's a subset of, they didn't say they wanted a party, but they already had your jewelry. So, which is great. Um, so that they're still kind of a warm lead. So those are the kinds of people that we're going to reach out to. I would start with the ones who wanted a date first. And the second I would start with, the second I would go with the people that you've already sold to. And then third, go to the cold calls, okay? That's how I would organize myself tonight. Um, the second thing is what are we saying to people and, and how are we saying it? You know, are we texting, Facebooking, email? And you just basically have to decide it, it's dependent on where they live. Where do they do their communicating? How do you hear from them most often? If it's somebody who bought jewelry from you, you don't know them very well, you might, you might see on their order form how they said to communicate with them. I've noticed some people are kind of specific and they, they check the email or they check text. Um, so you could, you could consider looking at that information to see the best way to reach out to people. Um, but then the question becomes, what am I going to say? Tone is really important. Casting vision is really important. So by tone, I mean, if we, if we act um, like, like some direct, direct marketing company where it's not like the girlfriend, where it's salesy, um, 
we, we say things that we would not actually speak out loud, um, then we know we're in trouble. But if we, can, if, if we can use verbiage that we would actually say out loud, if we can use girlfriend talk rather than formal business talk, even though this is a business, it's a girlfriend business. And so we have to accommodate the, that in our tone. Um, casting vision of fun and themes, jewelry from, free jewelry from Swarovski, getting friends together, um, and depending on your area, saying party not, or, or girls night or get together, um, it depends on your area, what you think people would, would really resonate with. Um, that's important too, because we have to use verbiage that's not going to turn somebody off. In my area, not everybody likes the idea of a party, mm -hmm. but if I say, you know, let's, you want to do a happy hour with jewelry makes me happy hour kind of thing. You know, they, they might, if they're in their twenties, they might like that idea better. If there's a single girl in her twenties might like that idea. So you have to gauge how well you're casting vision. And here's why. As soon as we offer a party to somebody, what she's immediately thinking is, are any of my friends going to want to come to this? Is this going to be lame? Or am I going to be able, am I going to feel confident in inviting my friends? And that's where the theme idea comes into play. <clears throat> so it might just be that we're talking about cocktails and crystals. Um, or, you know, uh, sandals, sangria, and Swarovski, Bellinis and bling. They're um, barbecue and bling. We, we heard some, some good ones the other night on the national team call about uh, some of the themes. I'm not sure if I wrote, I wrote them down someplace, and now I don't even know where I wrote them down. So, um, but casting the vision of how much fun it could be and um, really makes a difference. The third component has to do with what do I do next? So after we're done tonight, um, we're not actually done. The goal is to keep a list of who you reached out to so that if you don't hear back from them in two days, you send a second message. Because just statistically speaking, people are way more likely to get back to you after the second reach out than the first reach out. They may have read it the first time, but we're not in a place or a position to respond. When they see it a second time, it ratchets up the importance of them responding. They're far more likely to remember to get back to us. So getting back, reaching out to them a second time might be um, writing the word thoughts, question mark, smiley face, or making sure you saw my message the other night. Have a great day. Right, anything to draw, something to draw attention to the fact that you just sent them something. Um, because again, they probably saw it, but probably just couldn't respond at that moment. The last component, the fourth component, is what are we saying in response to the response is? And this is something that I want to encourage you to work with your upline leader on because I, I've had more people not realize that they could have been booking a party or that they could book a party with this person, but didn't know what to say to her in, to, in the first place. So let's pretend the response is, no, sorry, we're really busy. The house is under renovation. Well, that's not a no, not ever. That's a no, not right now. Like it's a situational no, as opposed to a permanent no. And that's where it's fair to flip right back and say, oh, that's great. So excited. You know, hope I get to see the renovation. Um, would you like, is it okay if I reach back out to you when it's done to see if you want to use that as a, if touchstone as a springboard for getting people over to celebrate the renovation? You know, so there are ways of continuing the conversation so that it doesn't end with her response. And tonight, while we're on this together, if you are able to, if you get something back from somebody, I want you to, to unmute and share that with us so that we can talk through, well, what's the response? Because this is how we build a pipeline of parties. It might be that we can't 
um, that we can't get a September party with her, but maybe there's a great November party right around the corner if we have the right response to her. So that's the fourth component. Um, my recommendation is that if, if you are at all confused about what to say to somebody, please, please just screenshot what you get back and send it to your upline leader because she can help you craft a message that you're going to be comfortable with um, and, and get, some, get some good results from. Okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to stop recording.